The Pineapple Thief are a British prog rock band who have always remained that little bit under the radar, even though they have a long and storied history spanning 13 albums, with this album, entitled Versions of Truth, being their 13th. Notably, in 2016, the band led by Bruce Sword, I've never been quite sure how to say his name, shook up their sound a bit when they added Gavin Harrison of Porcupine Tree fame, the acclaimed drummer of Stephen Wilson's old outfit, on board for the album Your Wilderness, which added such a greater rhythmic depth to their sound. But while he began on Your Wilderness, it wasn't until 2018's Disillusion that he really became involved on the creative side of the band. Your Wilderness was basically already written by the time he'd joined and was able to put on his drum part. But with Disillusion, he really left his mark as a drummer. Disillusion, for me, just was a really great album. It took Pineapple Thief into a darker, even more melancholic direction, though I mean, they're a pretty melancholic band already, with a great balance between those shimmering crescendos, the catchy melodies, and the heavy guitar work. So I've been really greatly anticipating what they would bring next. So as much as I hate to say it, Versions of Truth, for me at least, is probably their weakest effort since maybe 2014's Magnolia. That wasn't an album I was a big fan of. And Versions of Truth is an album that I really just I'm not vibing with that much. Let's go into depth and let's take a look at why Versions of Truth for me just falls short of the mark. First things first though, the opening track of Versions of Truth is brilliant. It's the title track, it opens the album and it really does stand out. For me it's easily the best song on the album with its creative use of I think xylophone or glockenspiel fused with Gavin's drumming in one of the verses. It just feels like a real continuation of Disillusion as it rises and falls and the intensity really reaches its high point towards the halfway mark as Bruce starts to sing It's Not how I remember it. And Gavin's drums in particular, high in the mix, provide just so much more than just a rhythm or a rhythmic backbone to the song. He adds so many gorgeous percussive flourishes and touches, highlighting each key beat and note with just a, a seamless ease. And the piano towards the end only really serves to favour this. It feels like listening to the start of what should be a brilliant album. And that's helped by the fact that the follow-up, Break It All, is pretty good as well. Break It All starts with some heavy, distorted chords and lyrics talking about different versions of yourself. It's very classic Pineapple Thief in terms of theme and in terms of structure of the song. Now this album, in terms of themes, explores more of the post-truth world, which isn't really a surprise from the title of the album, I mean, it's called Versions of Truth. And it does feel like a continuation of Disillusion, it's tackling those um, darker themes, thinking more, a little bit more about society than just the more personal nature of Somewhere He Was Missing as a previous album, or All The Wars, or Little Man. But back to Break It All, Gavin's drumming is really the heartbeat here, and it blends so nicely with Bruce's serene and emotion-filled voice. To me, there's even what sounds like a reverse guitar part in the bridge, and if you like Pineapple Thief, it's really hard to dislike this tune. It keeps itself interesting throughout, with a certain degree of heaviness balancing out the quieter and more ambient, contemplative moments, whilst accentuating the emotional beats. But then it's after this point that for me the album just starts to fall away and fall apart. You see, more similarly to 2014's Magnolia, Versions of Truth is structured around shorter songs rather than some of the longer pieces that you would find on 2016's Your Wilderness or 2018's Disillusion. And this for me is where the cracks really start to show in the approach that the Pineapple Thief took to this album. It starts to show from demons onwards. For me, when the Pineapple Thief are really at their best is when they construct songs which soar and build with a deliberate and expertly put together pace. But more importantly than any of that is their songs where they tell a story. The final thing on my mind from Your Wilderness, for example, is a magnificent piece of storytelling. Not in the same way as Pink Floyd's The Wall or Genesis is The Lamb. It doesn't have a clear-cut story, it doesn't have a narrative, a plot, characters, but it does have great emotional storytelling. And that's for me what the Pineapple Thief have always 
done best, whether it's the tenderness of the Little Man album, the turbulent relationships on show and all the wars, or the climactic, the final thing on my mind. Musically, that song especially swells in a post-rock vein, but most crucially, you really feel Bruce as he desperately pleads with the lyrics, with every waking dawn, it's you I see, everything you did was a part of me, ripped apart from me, as he also gently moans as if physically wounded as well as emotionally. But here the brevity of the songs, along with them just feeling a bit slow and more sluggish and leaning more on the ambient side of life than the snappier guitar orientated riffs, just makes them feel like they're certainly contemplative, but that they lead nowhere. They take the listen nowhere beyond where they first started on their journey, emotionally or musically. A lot of the songs on the album feel like they were entirely built around one core idea and do nothing to really play or subvert that idea. Like Demons, for example, is clearly built around this exotic Indian-y kind of melody in the chorus, while Leave Me Be is based around the guitar line from the intro. But unlike White Mist or even Out of Exile, these songs don't really grow or change significantly throughout. Sure, there's little bits of variety, but it's not really doing anything to fundamentally change it or even to further the storytelling. These songs just lack the dynamism which differentiated the Pineapple Thief from other bands and for me it leaves the album just feeling that bit static, that bit like it's moving towards nowhere. Now of course there's nothing wrong with shorter songs in principle, in fact I love when prog artists go down that route, but if we compare say a song like Too Many Voices at 3 minutes 16 in length or Out of Line at 4 minutes to comparable songs by Stephen Wilson or Poor Draper, and that's just from the same label as the Pineapple Thief on K-Scope, let alone someone like Neil Morse as well, then it just feels like Bruce's pop songwriting chops just aren't quite enough to carry these ideas. But if you think those comparisons are unfair, then even if we compare Bruce to himself in All the Wars from 2012, which is certainly, I would say, the Pineapple Thief's most accessible and maybe indie rock inspired album, four to the brim with catchy, infectious hooks, and most of the songs anywhere between three to five minutes long. But for me, this album just doesn't have quite the same melodic hook. It feels like he's trying to condense the slow, melancholic and atmospheric songs of disillusion like Threatening War or White Mist into shorter, sub five minute tracks. And that means that they're lacking both the pop hooks that you might expect for this length, or even the gentle build and emotional storytelling which these songs, these ideas would require, but within the length of the track just can't be provided for. There is an exception to the short song rule on the album called R. Maya. I'm not quite sure what it is about prog bands and the word Maya. I mean, I know Mikkel Ackerfeld loves it and seems to use it on pretty much every Opeth album, but I've started noticing it more and more, I could swear, in modern prog bands, the word Maya. Very strange. But anyway, at 7 minutes 30, this song just leaves me feeling rather cold. When he mentions the metaphors of sinking ships on this song, I feel like I'm going down with the ship, the, but with nothing to, musically or melodically to really hold on to, to stop me from drowning, other than Gavin's terrific drumming. The chorus is all right, but this song just feels like such a clear homage to disillusion before it, that it fails to excite and inspire me. And really, that's the core issue here. I mean, we've been through some others, but for me, this is really getting into the meat and potatoes of the issue. This album plays it really, really safe. I know the band saw a lot of success from Disillusion, and I liked it. I saw it as a bolder step forward for the band. But Versions of Truth just sounds like the second part of a double record that never happened, in certainly all but name and artwork. And I just expected something a little bit more from the band. Gavin certainly brings a brilliant degree of creativity in the rhythm section, as I've mentioned, of his gorgeous flourishes and touches. But I'm not sure he's always even being utilised that well. He adds texture, sure, um, like on uh, our Maya, but he doesn't always feel like he's an integral part of the track or part of the song's DNA or essence and fabric in the same way as maybe he did on Porcupine Tree records such as Fear of a Blank Planet. But aside from Gavin, back to the main point, this album just feels like a step sideways and not a very impressive step sideways at that. Too Many Voices, for example, with his almost Queen-like opening keyboard lick, 
is one of those where it feels as if it's building somewhere and you're, you're waiting for it to just hit, for it to explode. But then all that happens is it fizzles out towards the end and repeats the phrase too many voices about 500 times. And it feels a little bit like that too many cooks song in the end. I feel that it had the, a musical stem for a great idea, but it just died out a bit before its time. And that's how I feel generally a little bit about the band at this point. Your Wilderness and Dissolution were clearly building up to something big. And then we got to this album, Versions of Truth, and it just feels like we've been here before. Thanks so much for watching. This has been The Album Man. I hope you enjoyed my review of the Pineapple Feast versions of Truth. I'd love to know your opinions in the comments section below. So until next time, long live rock and roll.